three, three, two, three. Standing on the promises of Christ my King. Would you stand with me as we sing? Standing on the promises, 323. Let's sing that first all together. Standing on the promises of Christ my King, through eternal ages let his praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing. Standing on the promises of God, standing, standing. Standing on the promises of God my Savior, standing, standing. I'm standing on the promises of God, standing on the promises that cannot fail. When the howling storms of doubt and fear assail By the living word of God I shall prevail Standing on the promises of God Standing, standing Standing on the promises of God my Savior Standing, standing I'm standing on the promises of God. On that last together. Standing on the promises I cannot fall. Listening every moment to the Spirit's call. Resting in my Savior as my all in all. I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing promises of God my Savior standing standing I'm standing on the promises of God amen great singing I'll have the patch club come up they're going to be singing for us right after we pray let them get in place here New instrumentalist, too. She's got her, called it a fiddle earlier. I guess it's more of a ukulele. I'm sorry. Just got a nasty look. It's a ukulele. <coughs> it's, uh, it's great to have you all tonight. Let's open with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for just uh, giving us this opportunity to come to your house and um, hear f from your word and uh, sing praises to you and uh, pray and just seek your face, Lord. I pray that uh, you would just take control of this service tonight. Pray that uh, your precious word uh, would go forth with uh, power, Lord. I pray that uh, you would just be honored and glorified this evening. In Jesus' precious name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Big soft chair with my 
Fantastic. Well, a lot of folks missing tonight. So there's a, a host of folks that are ill, including our pastor. And so that's, uh, that's why you're kind of stuck with me tonight. But uh, we're, we're glad you're here. We have some visitors tonight. Um, let's uh, welcome anybody here for the first time. I know we have a couple gentlemen here. Would you introduce yourselves? Uh, tell us who you are, where you're from. Give us, feel free to give us a little intro as far as... Uh, why you're here. Thank you, brother. I'm Dan Higgins, and uh, I did both go to local churches, and uh, we were so close that every Saturday morning, mm-hmm. we just kind of prayed for his pastor and for me, and for the people here. Uh, we love people, we love passing out his word, and uh, that's what we're doing. Amen, amen, and uh, we do appreciate the Gideons. We <coughs> we uh, have the opportunity to um, uh, take advantage of their ministry uh, in the prisons, and uh, they provide the uh, uh, Bibles at uh, CRC in London, and um, uh, they're there, I believe, on Monday nights, And uh, but uh, we really appreciate uh, their ministry there, uh, giving the Word of God out, so thanks so much for coming. Uh, Brother Bowman, good to see you tonight. Uh, great. Anybody else here for the first time? I don't think I saw anybody else. All right. Very good. Well, let's uh, turn in our hymnals to uh, number 488. 488. I was once a sinner, but I came pardon to receive from my Lord. You may remain seated as we sing 488. Let's sing that first together. I was once a sinner, but I came pardon to receive from my Lord. This was freely given, and I found that he always kept his word. There's a new name written down in glory, and it's mine, oh yes, it's mine. And the white robed angels sing the story. Name written down in glory. 
missionary letter to us, please. This week, as you can see, we have uh, um, Chris and Lucinda Radabaugh highlighted on our missions, on our prayer guide with our missions. Uh, they are missionaries to the death and deaf in South Africa. We've uh, supported the Radabaugh's, I think, since 87, which has been quite a long time. Um, he starts off by uh, printing out John 3, 19 through 21, and this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world, and man loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hath the light. That doeth evil hath the, the light. Um, neither cometh to the light, and uh, says, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, and they were, are wrought in God. And then he goes on to say that uh, it's an amazing thing that uh, the first thing God created was light, uh, because uh, God knew that uh, one day the light was going to be his son Jesus that come into the world and be the light of the world. And then uh, he apologizes for the letter being late, but that's okay. Uh, and he tells about his, uh, the ministry that they have over there. They had graduation, and they had uh, five students that graduated from the deaf ministry. And uh, one of them was named uh, Munya, and he was saved on Pretoria Death Church, in our Pretoria Death Church. He uh, joined the Bible College, and it was a joy to see him grow in Christ and come to a place where God spoke to his heart, and called him into the ministry. He now is in Zimbabwe uh, working full time to start a death church in Bawawa. Uh, God has blessed his efforts with souls saved. He will be uh, soon having his uh, first baptism service. And then he had a lady named Mummy, and she graduated with a bachelor's degree in ministry and returned home to northern South Africa, the providence of Limpopo, and there is no church where the deaf can uh, learn God's word, and her ministry will be a, a great uh, thing for where she lives there, uh, and it will be of great importance. Pray for mummy that, uh, to remain faithful in a difficult uh, place to serve. And then uh, he had a couple more, and then he had Matthews was the last one. This young man has a deep desire to see the death one to Christ and growing in their faith. He has developed into a wonderful preacher and teacher. He assists in ministries and has a heart for the Lord. Pray for Matthews that as he does his best to follow the Lord in the Johannesburg Pretoria Ministries. He said, in closing, please remember to pray for our safety. Just this week, our neighborhood community, Watch, uh, informed us that uh, with the rise in hijacking and break-ins in our area, the current, current state of South Africa is not good. Corruption for senior government officials has uh, been exposed, and uh, there is uh, no political will to uh, uh, correct this problem. Uh, these are, uh, there are calls for a national uh, protest on Freedom Day, the 27th of April. We continue to be thankful uh, for the opportunity to represent the Lord on, a, on your behalf and appreciate your faithfulness in prayers and support. Souls continue to be saved and lives changed. Walking in the light is the most joyful place to be. Amen. Uh, the Redaballs there in uh, South Africa. Appreciate you praying for them. Uh, if you would, take your um, prayer guide out and everybody get a prayer guide as it came in. Anybody need one? You guys would be l love to get you one. All right. Very good. Fantastic. Let's start on the back. And uh, we have our coming events. We do have uh, two.
tomorrow evening. Are you inside? There at uh, CRC Prison, 6.30 to 8.30. And then uh, right here, Reformers Unanimous, um, 7 o'clock Friday evening. And then again at the London Prison on the 30th of April. Um, we had uh, just a little update, I guess. Uh, we thought we were going into Madison in May. And uh, speaking to the chaplain, he said we're probably going to have to move that off into uh, July probably, uh, June, end of June, maybe beginning of July. Uh, they're just not doing the transition quite as quickly as he thought they were going to. So we will trust the Lord's uh, perfect timing in that. Um, also on Saturday, we have our regular soul, soul winning and bus visitation at 10 a.m. Before that, uh, men's breakfast at uh, 8.15 uh, fellas, there's a sign-up sheet uh, at the uh, bottom of the stairs there. Please sign up if you're uh, planning to attend. The best $3 breakfast you'll find anywhere in Grove City, even better than Frisch's for 3 bucks. All right, that's at 8.15, and um, you'll, uh, you'll enjoy that. Uh, have, have a challenge from God's Word, and uh, that'll be good. Uh, beginning on uh, Monday, this next Monday, is our Operation Saturation. We have uh, 20,000 flyers we'll begin to get out um, over the next uh, few weeks before our country fair on the uh, 21st, I believe is uh, the date that that is. Um, in between there is the mother-daughter luncheon. I believe we are um, sold out, if you would. We uh, have about 113 ladies signed up, I think, for the uh, mother-daughter luncheon now. And uh, so if you want to be put on a waiting list, uh, you, know, you can uh, do that, but uh, I think it's, uh, uh, from the last I heard, it's imperative that you um, make sure and pay uh, very soon. Otherwise, you'll be bumped off the list, and those that are waiting will get on the list. So uh, make sure and do that. Somebody will be downstairs in the um, lobby afterwards with the, um, uh, with the uh, m to take your money, okay? Um, and obviously, we do on the 21st. We have the country fair. And June and July, you'll see the missions trip to Mexico. Hopefully, everybody who's going has applied for their passport, a pass card. That's essential. We're only about six weeks away. And uh, so looking forward to that. And then Vacation Bible School in July. Um, if we go to the inside, we are grateful. Last uh, Thursday, we had 35 there at CRC and uh, 13 saved. That was just an exciting night. And then uh, they had uh, 15 there in London and uh, five new men. Um, just uh, go through the um, health list. And uh, there's just uh, so many that we could uh, talk about individually. But, uh, you know, God, God knows uh, each of those uh, requests. And um, we just uh, pray that you will take, uh, take this and not just look at it on Wednesday night and uh, forget about it the rest of the week. But... Uh, we hope that uh, you just uh, keep it with you and um, uh, pray through these throughout the week. Um, pray for those in authority, uh, our, our leadership, the uh, leaders of our country, of our state, um, the uh, local leaders here. Um, we do need to be praying for them. This is a, a time that is, um, we see a lot of uh, corruption and uh, just uh, not a whole lot of um, godliness, and so we really need to be praying for those in authority and uh, the military and cancerless as well. Uh, don't forget about the unreached people groups. Uh, we uh, believe it or not, the entire time that uh, we've been putting those down there, we've not um, duplicated any. They've never been duplicated, and uh, we've been doing that for over a year now, uh, 10 every week. And um, it's, uh, it's just uh, amazing how many unreached people groups there are in the United States. So keep, uh, er, and around the world, I'm sorry. Uh, so keep praying for those. And then, obviously, our missionaries highlighted by uh, the Radabaugh family. I'm going to ask uh, Brother Jarvis to come and pray for these things. Lead us in prayer um, audibly as he prays out loud. If you would pray silently in your seat, follow along. And uh, Brother Jack. pray. Dear Lord in heaven, we are so very thankful to be able to come before you at any time. And Lord, we know in, within the very throne room of heaven, you have turned your ear to us as we pray. 
you do hear our prayers. Yes. God, we ask you for uh, we ask you for the missionaries that are that are on the list here, Lord. That uh, and, uh, we lift up Brother Radabon and, and the missionary to the deaf deaf in uh, South Africa. Uh, we Lord Lord, we pray you would bless and encourage him and strengthen the other missionaries that are facing uh, different situations where they are in different places around the world. We pray, Lord, for these unreached people groups. Uh, Lord, we pray that Lord that you would send forth someone to these to these to these people that they might hear your name some of these people have never even heard your name god we pray for them we pray for the list of people that uh on, on the list of salvation uh, some of these are friends and relatives the people in the church and people they know and and god we pray that you would that we would be able to have the words to say or those these people would reach someone lord that would could Tell them about you. Uh, Lord, there are very, very many, many, many people in this world that need you, and many are, are simply deceived. Let us not hate them, Lord, but let us uh, remember that our job here is to try to reach every creature, and that in your, your will is that none should perish. Lord, we pray for those on the list of cancer uh, that are struggling with this disease. Uh, God, you are the great physician, and we, we give these people to you and ask you, Lord, if it be your will, Lord, just heal them and let all the glory be given to you. We pray for those in the military, Lord. Uh, uh, we just pray you would help these people and protect them. Uh, we pray for our leaders that are in authority. Uh, Lord, uh, the greatest thing that could happen if they would turn their hearts to you, and Lord, we pray for that. Pray for the health uh, needs of, there's a number of people. We, we think of Pastor Slaybaugh, who is sick tonight. Lord, we pray that you would heal him uh, and bring him back quickly, Lord. What a good, what a blessing he has been to this church. Yes. Uh, Lord, we pray for the different ministries within the church. And we ask you, Lord, to uh, bless them as the, as the church makes this effort to, to reach out to this world. God, I pray that you would Bless you. I, bl I pray for the upcoming mission trip. I know there's many here that would like to go and, and they wonder about uh, the costs, all those things. I just pray, Lord, that they would simply turn to you and just tell you, Lord, that, uh, Lord, whatever they can't provide, that you would provide and just trust you and continue to pray about all the things that are needed. Lord, we'll be careful to give you the glory and the honor for all these things. And Lord, we know you are a good God and you do good things. And for that reason, we not only thank you for what you have done, but we thank you for what you are going to do. All these things we pray in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Uh, would you turn with me to 223 in your hymnal? 223. I am thine, O Lord. I have heard thy voice. Draw me nearer. Would you stand with me, please, as we sing? 223. On that first together. I am thine, O Lord, I have heard thy voice, and it told thy love to me. But I long to rise in the arms of faith and be closer drawn to thee. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope, and my will be lost in thine. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou Amen. Greet one another. Make somebody feel welcome, especially our guests. We'll come back and sing that last stanza together.
the narrow sea. Let's sing that last together. There are depths of love that I cannot know till I cross the narrow sea. There are heights of joy that I may not reach till I rest in peace with thee. Draw me Sing and let's sing that chorus one more time. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord. We're going to sing this uh, without the piano this time. She's been doing great, but we're going to sing it a cappella, all right? Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, nearer, nearer. Blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Amen. That's great singing. You may be seated as the ushers come for our evening offering. We have the country fair coming up. It's uh, exciting things happening with the country fair. Um, some new things we're going to uh, do. We'll uh, learn all about those uh, when we have our organizational meeting, but uh, uh, God's just uh, been orchestrating some really, uh, uh, really exciting things there. So, um, but a lot of that takes money, and so I uh, really encourage you. If you uh, we'll use this uh, offering tonight to go towards the country fair, and uh, we ordered, like I said earlier, we ordered 20,000 flyers. They came in uh, yesterday, so we have those. And we have posters for the s uh, stores and such. And uh, just looking forward to the operation saturation starting on uh, Monday. But uh, just uh, pray about what uh, Lord would have you uh, do uh, this evening. For the poll label. Pray for that. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time that we can come here tonight and hear the word of God preached. We pray that you be at the preacher tonight as he brings a, a message that we'll be able to use it in our daily lives and we ask that you'd uh, be with us uh, as we get the money for the fair and we pray that you'd bless it and we pray to bless all for tonight. Pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
really appreciate Sarah filling in. Um, Lisa and the whole gang, I guess, is sick tonight. So uh, Lisa's uh, gracious, or uh, Sarah graciously uh, filled in to uh, play for us. I'm going to have her play this. Um, it goes right along with the message tonight, and I was actually going to quote some of it, so, but I thought, you know, I'm going to go ahead and sing it before before the message. All right, so if you'll play, we'll... Gulf that separated me from Christ my Lord was so vast the crossing I could never fall from where I was to his demand it seemed so far I cried dear Lord I cannot come to where you are he came to me he came to me when I could to where he was, he came to me. That's why he died on Calvary. When I could not come to where he was, he came to me. came to me when I was bound in chains of sin. He came to me when I possessed no hope within. He picked me up and drew me gently to his side. Today in his sweet love, I now abide. Sing that with me if you would. He came to me. He came to me. When I could not come to where he was, he came to me. That's why he died on Calvary. When I could not come to where he was, he came to me. Amen. That's great. Isn't that true, though? When... I could not come to where he was. He came to me. Psalm chapter 116. If you would turn in your Bibles tonight to Psalm 116. I'm going to begin work, uh, reading in verse number 1. It says, I love the Lord because he hath heard my voice and my supplications. Because he hath inclined his ear unto me, therefore I will call upon him as long as I live. The sorrows of death come past me, and the pains of hell got hold upon me. I found trouble and sorrow. Then called I upon the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, I beseech thee, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Yea, our God is merciful. The Lord preserveth the simple. I was brought low, and he helped me. Return unto thy rest, O my soul, for the Lord hath dealt bountifully with thee. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you tonight for your precious word. God, I pray that tonight as we look into your word that you would just give us something. Lord, you know that 
I could ramble for a half hour, but it really wouldn't mean anything. God, I pray that you would give us a true word from you tonight. Pray that you would empty me of me, Lord, and fill me with your Holy Spirit. Allow me to say exactly what you would have me to say. Allow me to keep unsaid, Lord, what you don't want said. God, I pray that you would just take control. Take over right now, Lord. In Jesus' precious name I do pray. Amen. We're going to look at uh, this evening, and uh, primarily verse 4, 5, 6, and 7, <clears throat> what has God done for me? What has God done for me? We could say, what has God done for the sinner, or what has God done for the outcast, or what has God done for the, the one that is struggling, but I, I, I like to try to apply these things to me in my life, and I... I want us to look at what has God done for me. We look at the first three verses, and especially verse 3. It says, The sorrows of death have come past me, and the pains of hell got hold of me. I found trouble and sorrow. This guy was in a lot of hurt. He was in a lot of trouble. He had some serious issues. But then there was a radical change in his life, wasn't there? Then called I upon the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, I beseech thee, deliver my soul. This was the point in which he realized, I'm done with me. All I can do is ask you. So we're going we're gonna to look at some of these things. First, the first one we, we're going to look at, what God does for me. He, he goes out. We see that in Psalm 116, verse 4. He says, then called I upon the name of the Lord, O Lord, I beseech thee, deliver my soul. He, he says, deliver my soul. He says, would you come and pick me up out of that miry clay? He, he, he came to me. It wasn't anything I could do to get his favor, but he came to me. When I could not come to where he was, he came to me. He, Jesus made a habit of going out. If you look at uh, Luke chapter 7, Luke chapter 7, go down to verse 11, it says, and it came to pass the day after that when he went, uh, that he went into a city called Nainan, and many of his disciples went with him, and much people. Now when he came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out, the only son of his mother. She was a widow, and much people of the city was with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her, and said unto her, Weep not. And he came and touched the bear, and they that bear him stood still. And he said, Young man, I say unto thee, Arise. He, he came to that dead man, and he raised him back to life. When we look at um, Matthew chapter Go to Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9. Verse 35. And Jesus went about all the, into all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. He went about preaching. He went about healing. He, this, he, he goes out. God has a, has a habit of going to where we are when we can't come to where he is. When he, he, was, he went to Calvary, he, he wasn't forced to the cross. He could have called 10, 12 legions of angels to set him free. But instead, he went, he went willingly. He, he went. 
He came to me when I could not come to where he was. He came to me. So the, the first thing I see here is that he goes out. I beseech thee, deliver my soul. It's, it's not something I can do. Salvation isn't something we can do. Salvation is something God does for us. He brings us up out of the mowery clay. Set, us, set our re, uh, feet upon a rock, Christ Jesus. And then, then the second one, the very beginning of verse 5, he is gracious. It says, gracious is the Lord. Do you know God is gracious in your life tonight? What is it that God is gracious about? What, what is grace? Gra grace is us not getting something we deserve, isn't it? it? Grace is God not sending us to hell. Grace is giving us a home in heaven. Grace is giving us the power and that, that desire to do what he wants us to do. Grace is all of him and none of us. Grace is me not doing the work. Grace is God doing the work. Grace is none of me, but all of him. What don't we deserve? We don't deserve the freedom from that penalty of sin. Freedom from hell and death. We don't deserve a glorious home in heaven. We don't deserve that freedom from the power of sin. You know, we don't have to sin. It's, it, we, we have changed that nature from that sin nature now to a new nature. So we don't have to sin. No longer do we, do we not have that choice. Before, before accepting Christ Jesus as our Savior and having the Holy Spirit living within us, we didn't have a choice but to sin because we had that sin nature. But now we are free from that power of sin. How often do we look at what God's given us and seeing how gracious he is to us. We see that he goes out. We see that he is gracious. And then, verse 5 there, that second piece, it says, uh, Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Just for sake of it all sounding similar and alliterated, we'll say he is good. He goes out, he is gracious, he is good. What is goodness? We, we talked about this in the prison last week, actually. Uh, goodness is one of the fruit of the Spirit, and goodness is being the fruit of the Spirit. It is an outcome of the Holy Spirit living within us, and it is an attribute of God. True? I mean, if, it, if we have the fruit of the Spirit, and one of the fruit of the Spirit is goodness, then that's obviously an attribute that God holds as well. So goodness is that... Uh, conforming our lives. Now, God doesn't have to do much conforming because this is very natural for him. In conversations to behave benevolently towards others, God has an automatic disposition to do good. That's what goodness is. Having that disposition to, to, to do good. God is good to us. We could go on for probably hours if we went around the room and you could tell me how God has been good to you in uh, very specific scenarios and very specific situations. I could probably point out to different folks and say, you know what, God's been good to Joe because he's still alive yeah. and he shouldn't be alive after wrapping his uh, car around a telephone pole. There, there, but there, there's so many of those things we could go through. God's been good. God is so good to us. What has God done for me? He is good to me. He goes out. He is gracious. The end of that uh, verse, uh, verse number five, our God is merciful. He gives mercy. The, uh, the passage I think of when I uh, think about God's <coughs> mercy and is uh, Psalm 136. His enduring mercy. 
Psalm 136, O give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. O give thanks unto the God of gods, for his mercy endureth forever. O give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endureth forever. To him who alone doth great wonders, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that by wisdom made the heavens, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that stretched out the earth above the waters, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that made great lights, for his mercy endureth forever. The sun to rule by day, for his mercy endureth forever. The moon and stars to rule by night, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that smote Egypt in their firstborn, for his mercy endureth forever. And brought out Israel from among them, for his mercy endureth forever. With a strong hand, with a stretched out arm, for his mercy endureth forever. To him which divided the Red Sea into parts, for his mercy endureth forever. And made Israel to pass through the midst of it, for his mercy endureth forever. But overthrow Pharaoh and the host of the Red Sea, for his mercy endureth forever. To him which led his people through the wilderness, for his mercy endureth forever. To him which smote great kings, for his mercy endureth forever. And slew famous kings, for his mercy endureth forever. Uh, Sihon, king of the Amorites, for his mercy endureth forever. And Og, the king of Bashan, for his mercy endureth forever. And God and gave their land for inheritance, for his mercy endureth forever. Even in heritage unto Israel, his servants, for his mercy endureth forever. Who remembered us in our low estate, for his mercy endureth forever. And have redeemed us from our enemies, for his mercy endureth forever. Who giveth food to all flesh, for his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks unto the God of heaven, for his mercy endureth forever. How long does his mercy endure? Do you have an idea that we have a merciful God? His mercy endureth forever. He gives mercy. He goes out. He's gracious. He's good. He gives mercy. And then verse 6. The Lord preserveth the simple. Preserveth the simple. Another way we could say that is he guards. I think we have to use a G in there. He guards or he protects. Exodus chapter 14. Exodus chapter 14. <clears throat> Verse 13 and 14, And Moses said unto, unto the people, Remember, he guards. Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he, shall, he will show you today. For the Egyptians, whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. And the Lord shall fight for you, and he shall hold your peace. He guards. How about Psalm 34? Psalm chapter 34. Verse 19. says, Many are the afflictions of the righteousness, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. He guards. Psalm 91, 7 says, A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand. It shall not come nigh to thee. He guards. Nahum 1.7, the Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knoweth them that trust in him. He guards. He's that stronghold. He's the only one that can guard us truly from trouble. That's how, how we can have that peace. That, that peace is to be free from harm in spirit, mind, and body. And the only way we can know that we have peace is and, and being free from harm in spirit, mind, and body is to recognize that he guards. He is that stronghold. 2 Corinthians 4, 8, and 9. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. How is that? Because he guards. He protects us. How about this next one? He goes out. He's gracious. He's good. He gives mercy. He guards. 
and then he guides. He guides. He guides. I was brought low, and he helped me. I was brought low, and he helped me. He showed me the way I ought to go. Psalm 48, verse 14 says, For this God is our God forever and ever. He will guide us until death. Sometimes, doesn't it take us getting to the end of ourselves before we're willing to say, okay, God, I've had enough, and I'll, I'll go your way. I know myself personally, it took just about losing my job and my whole world crumbling down around me before I recognized God. I've done this my way up to this point. Now it's time. But I, I, I'm, I'm willing to just let's do it your way now. I, I'm done with me. I can't do this, this me stuff took me to a really pathetic place in my life. Now, how about doing it the way you want to? We see guys at the prison every week. And uh, in fact, we see guys at the prison every week when, when we have our testimony time. Almost every single week they say, I praise God that I'm in here. I praise God that I'm, I'm here because if I wasn't here, I'd be dead or worse. Yeah, but it takes God taking us to the end of ourselves before we can look up. He guides. And then lastly, verse 7 says, Return unto thy rest, O my soul, for the Lord hath dealt bountifully with thee. Return unto thy rest, O my soul, for the Lord hath dealt bountifully with thee. Dealt bountifully with thee. If I can get another G in there. He gives. He gives. What is it that he is so bountiful about? And this has, you know, this kind of can relate to the, his goodness, but he gives. He deals bountifully with us. And the, the one thing, and it, the first thing that comes out to, and to my mind is he is bountiful with the salvation that he gives to us. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That sounds pretty bountiful to me, doesn't it? That's fairly all-inclusive. He, he wants everybody to accept Jesus Christ as, uh, as Savior. God is, he gives salvation. He gives love. His love is unlike any other love. Probably the most quoted and most well-known uh, passage in Scripture, John 3.16. For God so loved the world. I mean, this is some big stuff. This word love is giving and giving and giving and giving and not expecting anything back. That's what that love is. Just giving and giving and giving. And he knew how wretched and how rotten Bob Reed was. And he still gave. That's pretty amazing to me. That, that, that's why we call it amazing grace because he, he knew me and yet he still gave his only begotten son not just for the whole world but he gave his only begotten son for this wretched guy that is pretty amazing God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son his bountiful salvation he gave salvation he gives love James 1 5 said is says, if any man lack wisdom, then he'll give it to him abundantly. Exactly, it says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally. That's pretty bountiful. 
and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. He gives salvation, he gives love, he gives wisdom. How about peace? We talked about that a minute ago, but Philippians 4, 7 says, And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. This isn't a peace that anybody can give you but God. And God doesn't necessarily give you that peace that passeth all understanding unless you're in need of it. God doesn't. I, I, I've been around a lot of folks that have um, you know, lost homes in a fire or a, a flood or lost a child or a miscarriage or you know, and all these things, if you're on the outside looking in, you think, wow, how do you go through that? I couldn't do that the way you do. I couldn't, I couldn't bear that the way you do. I mean, look at the, look at, you know, even Horatio Spafford, the, the writer of uh, It Is Well With My Soul, the song there, he, he lost his family, he lost his job, he lost his property, he lost his business, he lost his, lost his daughters. He lost a son. He, he lost everything. And yet he can say, it is well. It is well with my soul. How is that? Because God gave him that peace that passeth all understanding. That's part of that grace. God, God doesn't give me the grace to go through your trials. He gives you the grace to go through your trials. I remember a uh, in 1985, I believe, our uh, family had a house fire and uh, totally gutted the house and lost, lost everything, had to totally rebuild. And we were uh, going through that whole scenario, and God just worked uh, mightily, lost, lost most everything personally, but God, you know, spared our lives and uh, really worked through that. But we had some friends and I said, man, I don't know how you can go through that. That would just be terrible, and that would be, that'd be awful, and I, I don't know how you do that. It wasn't two weeks later that they had a flood, and it destroyed two levels of their house, floods. And you know what? They had the grace to go through that. They didn't have the grace to go through the fire, but they had the, the grace to go through the flood. And uh, God gives grace when you're in need of it. And he gives you that peace that passeth all understanding. We don't understand it. Well, that makes sense. It's a peace that passeth all understanding. We don't have to understand it. We can understand it. God says we're not going to understand it. But it, it, it's so true. God gives us that peace. He gives. And then lastly, one of my favorite uh, passages. Isaiah. If I can find it. Isaiah chapter 40. <clears throat> Starting on verse 29. He hath given power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. He giveth power to the faint. God gives strength. Notice he says, he giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Now, whose strength is better? My strength or God's strength? I'd just as soon have no strength of my own. Because if I have no strength of my own, that means my strength has to come from God. God's strength is a whole lot better than my strength. He giveth power. He giveth strength. That's the strength and power that I want. So what's God give us? What's God done for me? He goes out. He picks me up out of the miry clay and sets my re, uh, feet upon a rock. He's gracious. 
He's good. He gives mercy. He guards. He guides. And he gives. That's what God has done for me. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for your precious word. God, I pray that we would take these things and simple as they may be, I, I pray that you may use them in our lives and we would recognize that truly we are nothing without you. God, I thank you and I praise you for you being so good to us. Thank you for all those who have come out tonight. I pray that your will has been accomplished. Your word has been presented. And uh, I pray that we would just go home with a little bit of your word in our hearts that we may mull on and uh, that it may make some changes in our hearts and lives. In Jesus' precious name, I do pray and thank you. Amen. Amen. Let's stand and let's sing a song in dismissal. Higher ground. If you need it, it's 246, but I don't think you probably do, most of you. We're going to sing that first verse. I'm pressing on. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I'm onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's stable land. A higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Amen. You are dismissed. Ladies, if you need to.